Good morning and welcome back to Venice. If you saw my previous video, you will know that I arrived here uh, yesterday and I had a long journey from London to Sofia in Bulgaria where I had a layover, then to Rome and then finally I took a train to Venice. And Italy just opened on the 3rd of June to tourists in the EU following the lockdowns for coronavirus. But now, as soon as Italy is opened back up again and some of us are allowed to visit, it's a spectacularly unusual time here in Venice as it's almost devoid of tourists. And today we're gonna to be exploring the city to see just how quiet it is. A quick walkthrough of the room here in Allo Squero. So as you can see, double beds with canal views, which I'll show in just a second. The bathroom. Ensuite, hello. Spacious, modern, and connects beautifully to the room. And of course, what it's all about, the canal view here in the north of the city to the right and views to the left. Amazing authentic buildings around to wake up to in the morning. So link is in the description of the map location of Allo Squero and the website. I just had my breakfast in the garden. Beautiful as you can see here. Very nice and relaxing way to start the day. Typically easy Italian breakfast, jams, bread, coffee, tea, juice, muesli, yogurt that kind of thing. As you can see here, the streets of Venice, where I'm staying anyway, it's only Italians who are here. Locals, in fact. Now I have the job of navigating my way through the city streets and narrow alleys to the center for the first time. So I'm particularly interested to see how St. Mark's Square is. We know that the streets where I'm staying are virtually empty. But this is gonna be the real test of um, just how quiet it is. One thing I mentioned in the last video that I'd like to just repeat again, I don't necessarily condone traveling at the moment, I think it's an individual's decision to make based on your own assessment of the risks, the country you're going to, and what the whole situation is at the time that you're traveling. According to Google Maps, the end of this street should open up to St. Mark's Square. There we go. Anyone who's been to Venice before, please let me know in the comments below how this compares to when you visited. I have no idea because I have nothing to compare it to as it's my first time, but I would say that this is a pretty good measure of how quiet Venice is right now. Whether it will pick up by July, who knows? But if you've ever wanted to visit the floating city, then there's no time like the present. So the weather may not be perfect, but I think we can allow for that given the fact it's still dry and I have all this space. But I'm going to continue on to another famous point in Venice called the Bridge of Size, which is usually notorious for being crammed with tourists at a certain viewpoint looking towards the Bridge of Size. So let's go there and see what it looks like. Normally you would have to compete for a space at the front here. I'll flash an image of what it's usually like, especially during peak times, but now I'm on my own. 
Why is it called the Bridge of Sighs? Well, it was popularized by British Lord Byron, who said that prisoners leaving the palace convicted to the jail cell were said to have sighed when they passed over the beauty of the lagoon and saw Venice for the last time through one of the small cracks as they made their way over the bridge. And it's also synonymous with the romantic gondola journey which passes underneath here, as you might have seen in quite a few films. While I've been walking around this area, from take to take, I've been talking to various locals who are all asking me where I'm from because they're super interested to know as I am what seems to be one of the only people here that's not Italian. It's the only language I've heard. There's been no Korean, no Japanese, no American accents, nothing of the sort, which has been super interesting. And when I tell people, uh, sono inglese, I'm English, they think, how did you get here? Most of them don't know that Italy opened on the 3rd of June with no two week quarantine on arrival. Agree with that or not, that's what happened. And so it's really nice. It's almost like the locals have taken back Venice. Venice back to the Venetians. Following a massive downpour, as you probably saw earlier, the skies were threatening with dark clouds. Well, yes, it did rain eventually and I took refuge in a small shop and uh, it's dry and clear again. So continuing where I left off and I've walked just slightly away from St. Mark's Square and I'm coming to the main artery of Venice that punches right through the heart of the city, the Grand Canal. Obviously the views from up here are classic Venice. The name of this bridge is the Ponte dell'Accademia next to the Gallery dell'Accademia which is full of paintings of the love, romance and political history of Venice. 12 euros to go in there. I'm going to be heading up to the Basilica di Santa Maria which is the really iconic one with the dome far away in the distance over there. I'll have to walk through of course all this area. I've just come from St. Mark's Square, which is on this side, and of course the Grand Canal, and where Venice opens up. on my way to Basilica de Santa Maria and I'm walking through an area called Dorso Doro. Hope my Italian accent was up to par there. And it's exceptionally quiet, of course, today, but I think even during busier times, it would be pretty quiet as it's on the south side of the Grand Canal, which is just through the gap there. Onwards towards the cathedral, which you can see between the alleyway. It's awesome how it suddenly opens up here. The mouth of the Grand Canal, the entrance to Venice, the Basilica, the first thing that you see if you're coming from that direction. And there is an interesting background story to how it was built. In 1630, after the Black Death, Venice had lost 80,000 lives and the Venetian state wanted to do something to thank the Virgin Mary for her divine interventions. And so they pledged to build a great cathedral, a great church.
when I was planning where to go and things to do here in Venice, this particular point at the edge of Dossaduro was actually number one on my list and I'll tell you why. You can see all sides of Venice from here. The Campinale, Dodger's Palace, out into the sea where many ships would have gone to trade with the Ottoman Empire and the rest of Europe. Here you can see the south of the city which is normally hidden by the particular bit of land that I'm on now. You get the fresh air and you just get the feeling of what the Venetian state used to be. A trading city that made fortunes. Travellers like Marco Polo would have set out for China and the Silk Road and Asia from here. And there's just so much history at this very point, the entrance, the mouth to the Grand Canal. And that's why I would say you have to come and stand here and soak it all in yourself. morning. Today I'm kicking things off at the top of St. Mark's Campanile, the bell tower in St. Mark's Square, which has incredible 360 degree panoramic views of Venice. It was built originally in 888 AD, but has since been rebuilt twice. Galileo even tested his telescope here in 1606. The iconic 99 meter tall bell tower is a major landmark of Venice and often would signal the start and end of the working day. So if you want to go up the bell tower, it's 10 euros right next to St. Mark's Square. I just want to highlight a couple of things before I move on. Dodge's Palace, which is just opposite, is the home of the Venetian government, or was, for seven centuries, and is packed with interesting places, but it's closed at the moment due to, I guess, COVID-19 and the fact that things haven't quite caught up. Not absolutely everything's open yet. What's particularly interesting is the first floor loggia just above me, which almost looks like a theatre, but the darker columns, the ninth and tenth one from the left, is actually where they used to read out death sentences, as you can just see there in this very square. One more thing I want to mention is the basilica just here, which is worth visiting alone for the views that it offers of St. Mark's Square. Allegedly, St. Mark's body was smuggled out of Egypt by Venetian merchants who brought his body back here to Venice and then, of course, built a great basilica around it. You'll find depictions of this happening. Apparently, his body was hidden in a barrel of pork fat to avoid suspicions from the Muslims. If you want to reach the balcony, you can't just enter into the cathedral. You need to pay the entrance fee for the museum to actually reach the top, which is almost as good because you get to see the cathedral on your way, I've been told, to reach the actual top, which is the main reason you can get the views out over St. Mark's Square. Having walked away from St. Mark's Square, I'm now in an area called San Polo, which is on the other side of the Rialto Bridge across the Grand Canal. And it's a very atmospheric neighborhood with quite an authentic feeling, less touristy things here, more local things. And a lot of the buildings are quite colorful, 
and there are many little pleasant canals and the views across them are really great and it tends to be less people here so it's a cool neighborhood of Venice to check out and spend some time in especially if you visit when it's particularly busy once again picturesque as always and I would say that there are just so many districts of Venice to cover that I can't obviously go to all of them in this video but I can do my best to just show little snippets of what there is to be seen here. One place of fairly essential viewing here in Venice is the Ponte di Rialto, one of the most famous bridges crossing the Grand Canal. And when it was built in 1592, it was an incredible feat of engineering, which badly was needed. And they did it over the narrowest point of the Grand Canal in the city, a vital piece of history. And now one of the best viewing points to see the main part of Venice, the main artery. signing off this video of Venice and I just wanted to finish up here in the Jewish ghetto of all places in the north of the city another fascinating and quiet area even I think in busy times to check out and I can't really fit it in the video it would just be too long as you probably would, wouldn't want to watch a vlog of 40 minutes unless you do then let me know in the comments below but I thought it was a poignant point because right here there is a sign which says no navy, no navy. And these big tourist ships, cruise ships, are slowly destroying Venice. And I think it's important to say that we all stand with Venice. We don't want to see the mass hordes of tourists like we did before. We want a controlled, enjoyable version of tourism so that Venice is sustainable for the future and is in the best position to combat the changes which may come its way. So along with that, I'll end the video here. So thank you very much for watching and stay tuned for a boat tour of Venice in the next one. Peace.